Hello everyone, in this video we will be going through a full project uh, involving the laser cutter and uh, 3, uh, 3D laser cutting design in Fusion 360. So the object we'll be modeling today and we'll be cutting out will be a case for my uh, mega power bank. I believe it's a uh, 20 cell uh, 18650 4S power bank and we'll be designing a case for it. So this will be a no-cut video where I will go through the entire thought process uh, in designing and fabricating this uh, project. So stay tuned, let's go. So the first thing I will do is uh, get some measurements of this design. So uh, the first thing would be to just use a caliper and measure out stuff. So first things first, measuring the length and breadth. Okay, so this is the uh, I'm just going to create a simple shoe void that will be uh, representative of the size of the power bank or the cell array and just measuring out using my vernon calipers okay so now we have this reference and next we will import the uh, USB bug converter that I've just very roughly uh, modeled in another file so that because we will be needing to have a uh, we will need to uh, tweak our design to also uh, support this uh, usb converter that will be used to to uh, charge our phones so i'm just going to make some minor edits because i realized i forgot to put in the uh, hole mounts Okay, and now we can actually start to uh, design the case. So, right now I'm looking um, to mount this uh, USB bug converter perhaps to the wall like this, like opposite, and then this can stick in like this. And maybe we can have some form of uh, side wall to hold the main body in place. This is still very fluid and uh, we will be finalizing things as we go along. So let's just put this down here and let's just get a very rough uh, drawing out of our case. So mm, okay. I'm just going to create a variable to adjust the uh, size, the distance away of the button converter so now it's about it says 12.705 so I'm just going to put that down first you can edit that later if you so choose and let's let's get cracking so creating a sketch um yes there we go then we can okay. what I can do now is I can import a where is this um, I can import a, a template that I'm using. So first I'll make, make a copy. I will put it into power banks. All right, and then and then I can go ahead and uh, insert the current design. Or maybe I can edit it first. Maybe I can bring these into here. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. So, I will 
bring this mega bank into this so first thing I have to do, close it and save it first then I'll bring it into this uh, and I think I can I should I might not be able to reference the values but it's okay I can see if I, yeah I doubt I'll be able to change anything here so I'll just open this as well and then just take over, take all the values out so, one one two point six, eighty two point three, and six and sixty seven, eighty two point three and sixty seven. Okay, so there we go. I can change the thickness to five as well because I I do want a thick wall. Okay, good. Now we are going to. Uh, do edit add more features so most importantly let's uh, edit this and let's insert the offset which i think we should put it as 1mm so then the length we should add the offset oh offset oops my bad Then we can uh, further. Okay, so if I'm not wrong, this should have moved. Okay, we can actually use the point-to-point uh, -point command to just uh, to actually position this more precisely. So here and. Okay, so first things first, let's cut out the holes for the uh, boost at uh, the bug converter. So let's project in these holes. Let's also put in a small offset of 0 0.5. Okay, and then can make all these inner holes construction and then lastly extrude through extrude this through so we can mount the uh, so we can mount the uh, buck converter to the sidewall like so then uh, let's see mm. yeah, regarding the rest of it mm, we might want to place a little wall over here to prevent this from sliding and uh, currently this is also positioned pretty off oh and you see that we, this this is some there's an error here so we have to do that as well fix that as well so okay so first things first let's have another one mm offset let's see what we can do so um, Let's finish this off.
so if we create Five teeth, so six. Now let's see if there's five teeth, there will be in nine. We need three point three, so it's eighty three point three minus. Stop there, yeah, and then we put five teeth. So this will mean that these teeth are all uh, equal. Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can pick all of these. Let's just extrude it up by five. No, maybe say fifteen. choose yep so there we have a very simple wall that we can use to keep this from uh, crashing into the side okay and last but not least then we have to create the holes for the bug converter And this will mean that we sh will have random, yeah, these, these, these will be disconnected. So we have to just combine these with here. So there we have it, a very simple case to uh, house the uh, the mega bank that I built. Now let's go in and check that everything is correct. So I will turn off this. Okay, turn off sketches and I'm just gonna look at the bodies. So if I remove this, I should see clean cuts, no straight, no straight non-tooth edges. Same for this, same for this, and same for this. Okay, then next step I'm going to check that the Oh, there we are. I think I've spotted a problem. Aha! Uh -huh. So, didn't see that on the first round. Okay, so then I'm going to check again by using the section analysis. That looks okay. This looks okay. Okay. Oh, there we have it. We have done designing this, and now it is time to put it um, to save the files. So I'm gonna save it by using the uh, inbuilt, not say inbuilt, but more like the downloaded save DXF for laser cutting utility. Uh, I'm intending to cut this out of wood, so I'm just gonna leave it at 0.15 mm. So I gotta change. I gotta create a new folder. Uh, we'll call it our 
banks. Call this mega bank. So this over here is left. Wrong one. This over here is front. This over here is right. So over here is back. Okay, so we are done with our Fusion 360 design and it's time to go to our other software which is Inkscape. Alright, so now we are here in Inkscape and let's actually turn our DXFs into cut files or at least let's order the files so that we can generate G-code from them in laser web. So the first thing to do is to change your document properties, uh, specifically your size. So in my case, I've measured my uh, stock and I know that the height of it is 330 millimeters and the width I don't actually care because I have I know that the width is definitely in excess sorry yeah, I know that the width is definitely in excess so I'm just going to put it as like a thousand and I know that this isn't going to take up that much space either so then once I'm done with that we go to the right here and let's actually start opening our files so we see we just put it under power banks Okay, so I'm just going to spam open all of these files, wait for them to open, okay, then I'm just going to click OK, 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 OK. Alright, so now we just let everything open up first, a bit messy. Okay, so I always start from left to right and once I'm done with something, I close it so that way I don't forget what I've done, or what I've actually copied over. So. First thing, we copy this, dump it in, and immediately group it. This is really to help us in our laser web uh, when we generate our G code as well as moving stuff around after we have done uh, copying it in. So once I'm done, close it. Now this one, copy it over, immediately group it, and then close it. Next one. Copy, oops, paste, group, uh oh, and close. Copy, paste, group, close, copy, paste, group, and close. Okay, now that we've got all our parts in, let's actually start ordering them. So, usually I like to order it such that I waste as little space from the, uh, the height. So I tend to like to stack it up height-wise. So I would put this here, and then I would try to get more stuff, as much stuff as I can to fit underneath. Also, I typically don't like uh, interlocking the, the teeth, even if they are matching, I, I generally don't do that because um, I find it a bit of a chore to go in and delete the uh, additional, the, the, the overlapping lines. I find that's just, you know, I, I just can't be bothered. I'd rather sacrifice a bit of material for that convenience, so that's just me. But if you want to, you could mesh them and then delete the extra paths so that you don't 
uh, run over the same t set of teeth twice because that would be a bit unpredictable and uh, it's just, there's, there's no point, just wasting time. Okay, can this fit? Barely, so I will try my best to save space, but if that's not possible, it's fine, I will just choose something else because I rather, you know, sacrifice a bit of space now and have to redo the entire card because something screwed up. That's that really is the the mantra here. So I don't mind losing a bit of space here as long as I get a clean card. Just ordering the stuff. This this generally is just a bit of oh. Oh dear. Alright, so see, we have some problem here. Uh, I think this is... Okay, so if this is left, this is most likely right. I don't know why what, what, what happened there. Maybe I didn't copy it correctly. Mm -hmm, there we go. Just delete this. And I would try okay, let's see if I can rotate this. Oops. Okay, we'll take this. Move it down since I have extra space at the bottom. Mm. Okay, this this should do. There we go. Okay, this looks good. Okay, so once we've got our stuff settled. Now we take a rectangle and we just start from the corner, drop it down, and then just move it until we can cover the entire the entire perimeter. Of course we want to keep it at the same height as what we've done. This is too big, so I will go in and change the stroke style drastically. Maybe I'll put like 2 millimeters, because it's way too big. In fact, I think I can go for like 0.5. This is just meant to be a marking, it's not meant to, it's not an actual path, so I just want it to, to demarcate the space I have. So I'm just going to shift this down around here, and now when I click on this and I look at the uh, dimensions, I can see that the width is 261, which is about 26 cm, and yeah, 331, about there. So when I cut my piece of stock, because clearly this, isn't go this whole thing isn't going to go into a laser cutter, I know I must cut, uh, I must cut it to a... Uh, a length of about 26 centimeters so that's that's what I have to remember all right so now I'll just save this putting it under wrong uh, where is it I'll call this cut sheet that's just my convention and I will say 5 mm because then I know what thickness of material this was for. Alright, so then we go over to LaserWeb. Hello everyone, so now we are at our lab and we will be doing the final preparation of the G-code and running our G-code to cut the files. So the first thing we'll do is we will measure our stock. So in this case, I know that my stock is uh, approximately 4 it's 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, so I'm just going to create a rectangle. So I'll just do it again. I'll create a rectangle and I'm going to change the width to 100 and uh, 150 actually, sorry, and the height to 400 millimeters. And I'm going to move it to the corner of my origin. So in this case, my origin is at the top right corner, and so I will put the edge of the rectangle at the top right corner. If yours is the bottom left, then put the bottom left uh, corner to there. 
All right, so this, this rectangle will basically tell us where we are able to put our files. So I've already ordered this, these files uh, taken from the, uh, the, previous, the, the previous section when we, we uh, created the accepts and imported them to this uh, cut sheet SVG file. And so I will just order it like this. So I'm just going to move everything into the, 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 the region bounded by these, the, the rectangle and I'm going to ensure that there is sufficient spacing between the uh, cut, uh, the objects as well as between the objects and the border. So once that's done, I can save it. And I'm now going to go into uh, our laser web. I'm going to load the file in. And I'm going to go to the uh, browser and edit the uh, position. I'm going to change the max position to the max position of my uh, laser cutter and the Y position to also the Y max position to also be the max position of my laser cutter. Once again, this is because my laser cutter has its origin at the top right corner. So as you see here, we have it perfectly aligned with the corner, and now we can actually generate our G code. So I'm just going to go in here, and what I like to do is I like to touch, uh, I like to click one uh, path from each each uh, object here. So if we follow along the previous video, what we did is that we grouped each uh, each uh, piece as a unique group in the uh, Inkscape SVG, and this allows this causes everything to be nicely laid out as a group in the uh, browser terminal of Laser Web as well. So if you did not group it the way that we did the last time, then you will not see these uh, clear and distinct groupings. So you might may want to go back to Inkscape and uh, properly group everything. So for instance. Uh, so for instance, we can say we, if let's say we didn't group this, we should select all select uh, these entire objects, all these paths here, and just group them if we haven't done so. So ungroup, let's say if I select all these and group, and then to check that we have actually grouped everything properly, we can move them. So when we move them, we should see that only paths in this uh, only paths in this uh, piece move and nothing else. So that's how we check. So assuming that we've done that already. We should be able to see these distinct groups. So, as I was saying, we will click on one path of each piece, and that should highlight the piece in the browser. So, as you see, that we have highlighted these pieces. So, I'm just going to go ahead and click on everything here. Oh no. Okay, if I'm not wrong, it was this. Yep, see here, we have gotten these paths and these pieces, and we have not done these pieces yet. So, that's good. And now, I'm just going to click and drag everything into the Documents tab, and I'm just going to change the settings. So, for, for my machine, uh, 350 millimeters per minute works well, and the rest of it has already been pre configured by my uh, settings, and so I can just leave it as default. So, we've generated our G code, and as you can see, initially this was outline blue, but now it's outline red. And if we toggle our documents, we will see that we have gotten our, our G code generated. And so, at this stage, we can simply go onto our comms. We can connect to the server and to the machine and we can start the cut. So I'm not going to video this because it will take too long and I'll just show you the final result. Here is the final product, a fully working mega power bank. I hope through this project you've been able to see my workflow when designing uh, laser cutter parts using Fusion 360 as well as how to generate G-code. Till then, have fun making and I'll see you next time.